Here's the thing. Most of the river valleys in North America are legacies of these gigantic flows. Even the ones that didn't head directly onto the ice sheet because they were the recipient of massive um, precipitation events, um, pluvial events, if you want to use that term, pluvial, which means rainfall, you know, the, even in the, in the southeast. And again, we'll be looking at that too, so that we see some of the landscapes of the southeast, the southwest, the northeast, how the whole continent basically bears the imprints of these massive catastrophic episodes that not only terminated the last ice age, but even go back further than that uh, to even earlier catastrophes. The problem is when you're trying to understand the earlier catastrophes is that when you have a succession of catastrophes or cataclysmic events, the younger ones tend to largely obscure the older ones. But once you've kind of teased out the, the, the nature of these landscapes, you can get, then begin to almost proceed in, in certain areas through the existing configuration to see that there's older landscapes that have maybe been oftentimes buried. Because, you know, whenever there's erosion, you have material being transported. That means somewhere else you have deposition. It means that where one landscape is getting stripped away, somewhere else there's a, a corresponding landscape that's getting buried. And so between the stripping away and the burying, oftentimes whatever was there before, the previous world, the previous landscape is not there anymore. And that's the thing that I am hoping that, that one of the insights that comes out of this, this uh, series that we're going to do is that people really begin to understand how, uh, how extreme the remodeling of this planetary surface was uh, during the last glacial termination. And then give, use the, uh, with that insight in hand, being able to look back and realize, yeah, we've had multiple episodes of, of planetary remodeling, if you will. And each one tends to eliminate largely the, the landscapes that went before. So if you had any kind of culture, any kind of civilization, which gets us back to that question, that existed 20 or 30,000 years ago, it wouldn't be surprising that it's been largely erased. And so, you know, this constant question about where are the potsherds, you know, where are the, where are the, the toolkits, where, where's the evidence that there were people, you know, existing back then? Well, that's what many of those, you know, skeptics, if you will, of, of an older uh, culture have failed to, to understand is, is the extent to which the planetary surface has been completely rearranged. And once you understand that, then you begin to see, oh, yes, I can be now see why we wouldn't expect to find uh, a lot of evidence because that world doesn't exist anymore, literally. Now, so, but, and I mean, we've been talking about Atlantis as kind of using that as a metaphor. And I want to make it clear here. I am not saying that we found Atlantis. This is Atlantis. And I'm not really saying that. What I'm saying is that this could be, it could be because it's consistent. That's what I'm trying to show is that, it's consistent with, with really the only real account we have. So what I'm saying is not necessarily even that this was Atlantis. I think what I'm really trying to say is that there could have been a culture on a group of large islands in the mid-Atlantic during the last ice age. I don't know about the climate, the ocean, the nature of the changes, and so on, and what we've seen in terms of the vertical movements and, and, and so on. I mean, so what we're saying is that there could have been. Yeah. You can't just a priori rule out the possibility that there could have been a, you know, sophisticated maritime culture, right? We, and we're not, you notice, we're not saying anything about flying machines or crystal technology or aliens or any of that. And I'm not saying that they may, that, that someone back whenever, and we, we're going to get into that in future episodes, certainly the idea that, that there was much more sophisticated advanced knowledge in prehistoric times than the, than the standard models have recognized. I mean, I think we all have looked into this thing enough to know that, to know that there's just the anomalies and the coincidences uh, are just, are, are too great. Uh, you know, it, it gets to the point where you can kind of keep sweeping things under the rug for just so long until finally there's no more room under the rug anymore and everything just starts spilling out. And that's kind of where we're at now. There's just, the, you walk in, there's a big lump in the middle of the room of, <laughs> of the carpet. And under that is all of this stuff that doesn't make sense within the standard paradigm of prehistory. 